Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's complimentary webinar from ICMI, Maximizing Your Strategy for Social Customer Service, sponsored by Salesforce and Deloitte and featuring Yamaha. I'm Christina Hammerberg, Associate Editor and Community Manager for ICMI, and I will be your host today. Before we begin, let's do some housekeeping. You can participate in today's webinar during the Q&A session by asking questions at any time during the presentation. Just type your question into the Ask a Question box at the bottom right of the window. You'll need to click the Submit button. Take a moment now to disable your pop-up blockers if they're on. Also, you can learn more about our speakers today by clicking on the Speaker Bios button below the presentation window. The slides will be advancing automatically throughout the event. If you like, you may also download a copy of the slides by clicking on the Download Slides button located below the presentation window. If you are experiencing any technical problems, please visit the webcast help guide by clicking on the help link below the media player. In addition, you can contact the technical support helpline and you'll find that number in the help guide as well. And now on with our program. With us today is Brad Cleveland, Senior Advisor for ICMI. Brad is also the author of the leading call center handbook, Call Center Management on Fast Forward, which is now available in its third edition. Also with us today is Tony Cavanaugh, Vice President of Marketing Service Cloud for Salesforce, Rick Williams, Manager, Customer Support for Yamaha, and Rob Rose, Principal and Service Cloud Leader for Deloitte. Welcome, gentlemen, and thank you for being part of this presentation. So customer expectations are changing more rapidly than at any point prior in recent history. And this is happening despite, or in some cases because of, broader economic challenges. So to begin, Brad Cleveland will identify the steps you can and must take now to maximize your strategy for social service. So Brad, if you're ready, I will hand this presentation to you. Sounds great, Christina. Thanks very much. Can you, can you hear me okay? The obligatory first question, right? <laughs> yes, Ken. We can hear you. And thanks, everybody, for being with us today. It's great to be with you um, for all the challenges in the world. This is the most exciting and important season yet, I'm convinced, in developing our services. So really looking forward to this time. It's great to be here with Tony and Rick and Rob. They've got great stories to tell. And our hope is that all this adds up to something you can not only use, but maybe you're a little bit inspired by. So. Over the next 15 minutes or so in my block, I want to talk uh, a bit, take a quick look at uh, how far we've come as a profession, as a customer service profession, and the steps that we believe are before us as we put uh, social services, uh, social customer service in place. So just by way of context, I just want to take a minute or two to, to look at how far we've come. We made a big leap forward about 20 years ago, and some of you on the line will remember this. Um, we, we, as an industry, as a, as a profession, if you will, we begin to view customers differently. And, and I don't want to put all of us in the same bucket, maybe somewhere in light and far before that, but we realize, hey, if we do a good job uh, with delivering service, they're going to stay with us, and there's some value to that. So we call that customer lifetime value. Some of you will remember the pencil work, and, and it's still valid and certainly still used today. It's as valid as ever. And about that time, and again, we're back kind of in the early, mid-1990s, we, we discovered a related concept. Uh, they talk to each other. They, they tell their friends and colleagues about service. And maybe word of, maybe customer lifetime value is 500 or 500,000. It depends on the services and the context. That's multiplied when they, when they tell their friends and colleagues and, and others uh, about the service that they, they received, whether good or bad. In the late 1990s with electronic communication and email and customer forums and feedback sites, all those sorts of capabilities. The numbers, of course, grew. The, the latest estimate is that they tell 16 others, on average, about their experience, but that can vary by thousands or even millions, a la United Brakes Guitars and other examples that are so prevalent out there. Pete Blackshaw wrote a book probably, probably about five years ago now, Satisfied Customers Tell Three Friends, Angry Customers Tell 3,000 was the title. And the numbers weren't supposed to be exact, but he hit on yet another principle, that if you're unhappy, you tend to tell more, <laughs> for, for whatever reason, than if you're happy. And so we, 
we've come a long way as we've built built these um, these principles into our understanding of our customers and, and and serving them. And more recently, it's become clear, you know, wow, there's this whole new phenomenon that's taking shape. It, it impacts our brand, our business results, our reputation with people who, in many cases, we've never even had a direct interaction with. We can't just extrapolate the research of the past now forever and expect to get our arms around this. So I threw in a few numbers uh, here, and, and you know, we all see these sorts of things every day. They've, they've kind of got a wow factor. And by the way, you can download these slides. Some of these are pretty detailed, and, and um, I'm just spending a moment on them. So you can grab these slides and have all of our presentations. But over a trillion URLs, um, this next number is just amazing uh, to me, 6.1 billion global phone subscribers across the world. Um, Facebook measures their, their, their adoption rate by the percent of the planet that's using the service. Uh, Twitter really becoming the go-to source for what's happening right now. I, I found myself using it during the Olympics just to, just to stay up with things, especially given the, the, the time zone change. And, you know, we, we try to get our arms around this in the customer service space, and we ask, well, what, what do these numbers really mean? What's this trend really mean? And, and candidly, many executives uh, are kind of whisper, hey, you know, this is all terrific, but the, the numbers are so large, there, there's so much, and some feel like it's kind of a fad, and others feel like it's, it's changing things, but we aren't quite sure how. And, and the whisper is, well, how do you get at all this anyway? I mean, 2.3 million uh, blog posts every day. How, how are our customers going to access that? You can't, right? You re reach a point of saturation. Well, not true. With search, you can find anything in about two seconds flat. It takes less than that for the search engine. You just have to mentally process it. So I sometimes tell a story of a, uh, at a wireless phone uh, at my home that was giving me trouble some interference. So like like you would do probably, I, I went to a search engine and typed in the model number and a description of the problem and voila, five or six pages come back and one of them was another customer who described the same problem and he, he talked about how he worked around it. The customer was a happy ending, but the, 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 the company was nowhere to be found. Um, and and I, that just put a little question mark in my mind. Uh, do they get it? Are they out there where they need to be? In another example, and ironically somewhat somewhat different, the, the I, I bought a mobile uh, a portable hard drive recently, and like uh, most of us, 86% of us say the say the uh, stats. I went on and did a little quick little bit of research to find out what other customers were saying, and uh, most of the feedback on the, the one unit I was looking at was really good. Um, there were a few one stars out of five in this feedback site. So I clicked into a few of those. One was a particularly <laughs> a horrible story about this guy that was trying to back up his hard drive to this portable drive, and something failed somewhere in the middle, and he lost the data on both sides. Bad story, right? Underneath that, the company was there with a post. We are, and it was written really well. We are, we are really sorry about that. We really apologize for this. Um, this is very, very rare. We're here to help you. If you'll contact us, we'll do everything we can to help you get that data back. And it, it, you know, it gave me assurance that wow, they're out there; they they really get it. So this is, uh, I am convinced, it's more than a fad. Uh, it's uh, certainly something that's fundamentally changing how we connect and how we create value. So what do we do now? And I want to quickly look at five major steps we're seeing as leading organizations put their strategy in place for social customer service. And the, the first is a common refrain. You've heard it before, and it's a good one. Join the conversation. Begin by listening. I was talking to the executive of a, one of the auto manufacturers. This was, I guess, late last year, and, and she was describing how they put in a listening tool, and there's a bunch of them out there, and you'll hear about some capabilities today. But they put in this listening tool, and, and she describes the day they literally flipped the switch, and they programmed some, uh, some, some key terms, their company and products and services, and, and they were watching these posts uh, scroll past, scroll, scroll up the screen, uh, tweets and Facebook and 
blogs, and she describes literally wanting to sit down right then and begin interacting. Like, hey, that that person needs help. We can help with that. And she doesn't have the right information. That, you know, that's easy to resolve. And bless him for saying that. That's terrific. And and and, and these these posts are scrolling past the screen. Like I want, she said, I wanted to sit down right then and there. And that's what happens. A little microcosm of what happens. We begin listening, and and you begin to see the need very quickly. So join the conversation. Begin by listening. The second step is to harness the contact center, harness the contact center's potential. I did a seminar for an ICMI client uh, just very recently, and and it's a B2B company, and we were, this is with their their customer service execs, and we're all in a, a conference room, and we were kicking around a number of things, but one of the things that came up was, was social customer service. And there was a little bit of resistance to it. They, you know, well, we're not quite sure how aggressively we need to move into this space. And we were just kind of kicking things around. I had my computer plugged in, and, and it was projecting to the front of the room. And I went to their Facebook page, and I heard this collective gasp in the room. And I looked up, and in the left column of their Facebook page, they had this marketing post of grand it was all laid out nicely that this marketing post of grandeur and some some issue of importance in the right column there was a customer who had the the, the simplest customer service issue you can imagine it was a password reset and he couldn't get through he was totally frustrated so he went to their facebook page and posted you know your services you know, he described it quite uh, colorfully and and I, I I can't get help. How do I do this? And and he he said I I might be a little bit dumb, but I'm not dumb as a plum. And it, it was kind of funny and it was a, a bit tragic. The the customer service director looked around. He said, "Someone go help that guy. I mean, let's just go help him, like right now." And secondly, why aren't we looking for this sort of thing? And why wasn't marketing beating our door down to get our help? And I had to smile because that's how it often begins. That was just a little tiny picture of how it often begins. There's some catalyst, some event. Uh, Social often begins as marketing or or corporate communication. It invariably leads to service. That's what it's about. That's what we're about ultimately. And we we have to turn our organization into that service engine that complements the message we're trying to get out there. That compels us to rethink our customer access strategy. And I put a number of channels on this slide. You probably won't be handling all of them, but you'll be handling some of them and more all the time. We tend to see these things coalesce around different parts of our organization if we're not looking at them across the board. So maybe email and phone is is handled by the contact center and self-service may be owned by IT and Social may live in marketing, and you bet there's some there's some interaction, but 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 we tend to see these kind of coalesce and almost uh, um, perpetuate any silo that exists. So, by customer access strategy, we mean step back and look at all of these components. Who are our customers? Why would they interact with us? What access channels should we open up for them? Into it, who makes professional. Um, their professional accounting division. They make uh, accounting software, financial software. They went through this as a team, and they borrowed an idea from a sister company. Hey, why not Why not open up the opportunity for them to interact with each other? So they programmed right into the software a capability where you click a button and go out and, and ask questions in this forum. The, the thing that really made it work is they – easy access. If you're sitting there using the software, you can click a button and go right out uh, into this community. I didn't know if it would take off. It it did. In fact, there are millions of posts a year, 94% of them say into it or answered by that community, um, which means those that go through to the call center are at a much higher level. And the call center, as one of their managers put it, their agents have turned from answer giver, givers to problem solvers. And it's the call center that's helping foster this and, and, and push it along and capture FAQ documents and, and ensure that the information that's created through these interactions are available both internally and externally. Uh, exciting, really exciting process to see. A fourth major step then out of five is that, all right, we've got this new kind of work. And like channels in the past, we need to build it into 
our planning process, and forgive me, this slide's kind of busy, but I took all the possible uh, channels. You, again, you won't be handling all of these probably, but you're probably adding some of these and probably have plans to add some of these. But we've got to take, uh, we've got to take this new work just like any other in the past and build it into our plans, build it into our processes. And that means using good old, good old Erlang C or computer simulation as an alternative. So I've got a little example here, and if we've got this workload uh, that, that we need to handle, if you're sitting very far back um, from the screen, you're probably not able to see these numbers real well. But this is just showing, hey, if we've got a workload to handle, it doesn't matter if it's Twitter, it doesn't matter if it's Facebook or, or blog posts, uh, it's workload. And if we need someone to be there uh, interacting and handling it, we've, we've got to run some analysis. So. Erlang C has been around for almost 100 years now, and this tells us we need 10 people. We don't need five. We don't need 20. Uh, we need 10. I want to submit social workload is very, very similar to workloads of the past. Uh, this should not feel, not feel that new. It shouldn't feel that different. I, I wrote a blog post about Zappos a few years ago, and They've gotten so much great publicity, and this this was, you know, again, it was a few years ago, uh, 2009, somewhere in there, and I talked about some of the things they were doing in their call center, and I got a response within an hour or two from one of their call center agents, hey, Mr. Cleveland, thanks for the blog post, it's great, we're doing our best, and I'm going to share your post with others here, and you know, we had this little dialogue, but somehow that blog post made it to his screen, he looked at it, he interacted, um, and, and it's a wow factor that someday will be expected, uh, someday very soon, and, and, and even today in many cases. Uh, but, but they were able to respond because they built that workload into, into their overall plans and processes. And finally, a fifth major strategic step we're seeing then is to cultivate strategic value. Move away from interactions in a vacuum. And, and see our role in, and this really reflects the, the, the maturity of the industry we've seen over the past 20 years, see our role in handling the full breadth of these interactions, including the, these new ways to communicate. And as we do, and as we meet our customers where they are and how they want to communicate, and we capture that and we build stronger products and services and processes, we impact these areas that matter most, and that builds a, a stronger organization. It, 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 it positively impacts everybody who's a part of it, our shareholders, our, our employees, and, and certainly our customers. So this is an exciting season of development, a very important one. Uh, we're, we're looking at uh, exciting new ways to interact with our customers, and given the one-to-many to, to nature of social, we can really have leverage like we've never seen before. So um, I want to turn this over at this point to Tony with Salesforce.com, and uh, we'll go from there. So, Tony, it's all yours. Hey, thanks, Brad. Uh, listen, uh, Brad, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, depending on where you're, you're all sitting. Um, it's great to be here. Uh, Brad gave you a great insight, uh, you know, as to, you know, trends in, in service and how you potentially can, can, can address those as you – as you move forward in your organization. What I want to do is uh, just give you a little snippet, a little bit of an idea as to you know, how we Salesforce enable uh, you know, that, that, that process and, that, and those endeavors. And, and it's, a, you know, it's a pretty exciting time for, for us. Um, you know, we have uh, phenomenal, we've been experiencing phenomenal growth in, in, in the market. And um, let me just give you a little sense of where, where, where we're going with that. Um, as you can see, you know we we've seen, as I said, phenomenal growth in 2000 in in 2012 or FY FY 12, where we we saw you know two and a half two two point six billion. Uh, you know in FY 13, we're growing, we're anticipating growth even at, at a higher rate. Uh, we've got, as you see, uh, you know high growth rates. We're we're managing about 56 billion transactions a quarter. We're counting the days where that's going to be a billion billion transactions a day. You know, it's just phenomenal, and you know, we've been acknowledged by the industry to be innovators. We're, we're number one enterprise cloud computing. You know, it's it's, it's just a, it's just a great place to be for us right now. And, you know, the way we get there is that we work with companies who have on their mind and the top of their strategic imperatives 
that they want to move from current models to new models. And the new model, the one that's really pervasive, is the one that you, you really need to get your arms around today, and that's all about becoming a social enterprise. And it's the way that you can, you can experience phenomenal and accelerated growth. And we're working really, really closely with, with, our, our, with, with some of the world's leading brands to help them get there. You all know us for, for, for SFA and for, for how we enable you know, the, the sales function, but we have a ton of other capabilities that you may not be aware of that you can see here on this slide. I mean, we're, we're number one in sales, as, as um, you, you guys are all aware of. As of this year, as acknowledged by, by not only the analysts, but also uh, other, influence, other influencers in the market, we are number one in service. And we're, we're going very, very hard to get number one in marketing. We're, we're, we've made some key acquisitions during the year. That's going to have a great impact on, when you put all of these together, how you enable and engage uh, your customers. And then not only uh, 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 customer centric, but also inside the business, uh, we have our work.com um, capability where we're changing the way people actually you know, inter do their daily jobs. We're changing how people uh, interact through, uh, through uh, chatter and collaboration. And we also provide companies with the ability to do what they really need to do as we enter into this, this, these new eras, is to, be, is to be flexible. We allow folks to extend existing applications and build new capabilities that give them clear competitive advantage. But what we want to talk about today, uh, very briefly, is, is the service component. And what we do, uh, what we offer here at Salesforce is, 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 is service cloud. Um, you know, very plainly, we are the world's leading social customer service app. We have been acknowledged uh, by Gartner uh, to be the number one, the leader, in the magic quadrant uh, for customer service. We are the leader from Forrester's perspective in the customer service. We have been voted by CRM Magazine as number one in customer support and number one in case management. And look at all our customers. We have, actually that number 17,000 is higher. We're, we're well over 20, 22,000 customers uh, in, in Service Cloud. And you see the names. We, we have, we have we've just got some phenomenal names. We've got, we got you know, Symantec, we've got, we got uh, uh, Nissan, we've got we got a, we got Bank of America. We've got a ton of of, of uh, household names and leading brands uh, as customers. Um, you know what's interesting is that you know this this whole um, uh, emergence of social is something that not only we're talking about, but again it's being identified uh, uh, by by much broader in the market. So I just want to show you a, a graph here. That this is something that was taken from. Uh, at uh, the Global Contact Center Benchmarking Report of 2011, which essentially shows ch shifting, shifting, shifting service channels. Brad, you know, showed that you know, all the channels are available for customer service. Absolutely not everybody is, taking, is managing all of them, uh, but a clear trend, as we see from this report, is that increasingly folks are focused on, on, on the social channel. You know, as of today, about 18% you know, of those that the, that the, that the Global Contact Center Benchmarking Report looked at uh, are concerned with service channels. But what's really interesting is that number is going to explode. In the next 12 to 24 months, an additional, an additional 30%, 35% uh, of, of uh, contact centers out there, and customer service organizations, are going to concern themselves with social. That's a total of 50% of, of, of organizations that are looked at uh, are, are going to be concerned with social. And that's as of 2011. You know, that's, that this, is, this number is growing. Uh, and it's growing at a, at a phenomenal at a phenomenal rate. So, what is it that we actually help uh, folks to do out there? So, you know, some of the challenges uh, that are facing uh, you know the contact center, we look at them in broadly the three categories that we concern ourselves with. One, uh, you know, folks are customers are 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 are, are frustrated. Uh, there's inconsistent service uh, delivery across channels. It's not that there's that, that organizations are not adopting channels and new channels. That they have email, they've got phone, and they're adopting perhaps web chat. But it's the problem of how do you inter integrate those? How do you deliver consistent channels, a consistent service across all those channels? So if you go onto the web, enter in information, or look for or, or submit a request, can't get the answer, and you pick up the phone, that there's continuity there. You know, the greatest frustration is that when you do pick up the phone, and some of the, the agent at the other end of the phone uh, starts asking you the exact same questions they've already engaged with on, on, on another medium. Uh, or another channel. The second piece is low agent productivity in the contact center. You know, today we all we all know it. Uh, agents are are they're they're, they're swivel chair. 
they're, they're, they're accessing multiple systems, six, eight, ten different systems to try and get an answer. That's just the inefficient. And what we do is we help to work with our customers um, to, to help to consolidate those into a single view to enhance productivity, uh, enable the agent to do back-end calls into, into back-end systems to understand you know, financial and legal and HR information that's relevant to the service request uh, and deliver a better quality answer. And then the third thing, uh, it's all about delivering a better customer experience. We've got to take our perspective from being inside out uh, and productivity and efficiency driven to be outside in to ensure that what we deliver to the customers and experience is what, is, is what they want to deliver, or what they want to experience. And increasingly, your customers are going onto Facebook and going on the web and having conversations uh, amongst themselves without you actually being there. And that's, that's a problem. Um, and we're helping, our, we're helping our customers work through that and engage customers where they want to be engaged, which is increasingly out there uh, in, so, in the social world. So here's just some examples. Uh, of how we've, uh, of what, what, what uh, we have helped our customers achieve. You know, um, when we look at consistently delivering outstanding service, uh, we do a survey every six months. Actually, an independent third party does it for us uh, across about, I think the most recent survey was over 5,500 customers of ours responded to this, and we aggregate all of the key metrics that are, that are important for, for delivering good service, and you see them right here. Delivery, consistent delivery, consistently deliver, deliver outstanding service. We're seeing that our customers, on average, are, are increasing the first call contact resolution to over by over 37 percent. We're achieving higher agent productivity of greater than 36 percent. And one of the most key metrics uh, around retention, we're experiencing our customers are experiencing over 20 a 28 percent increase in retention. All of this pulls together uh, to, to drive to a really, really healthy increase in customer SAP. So that's really just my, my prepared marks, uh, just to give you a sense of where we're at. Uh, you know, I'm going to hand it over now, uh, now to Rick. Rick. Rick, take it away. All right. Well, thanks, Tony. And let's see if I can get set up here. There we go. So this is truly an exciting topic that we have for you today. I think uh, that Brad and Tony have kind of laid some foundation there, so hopefully I can keep the momentum going. So before I get into that, let me spend a few moments talking about Yamaha and make sure we understand which Yamaha we're talking about. Just for clarification, we're talking about Yamaha, the music company, not Yamaha Motors. Yamaha Motors, they make things like motorcycles, boats, ATVs. We make music equipment. We make just about everything related to music and music production. Our product line ranges from marching band instruments to commercial audio equipment. Yamaha has been in business in the United States for a little over 50 years, and our parent company in Japan has been in business for about 125 years. Our slogan is powered by music. So just a few more highlights for you. Uh, we are the world's largest manufacturer of musical instruments. One in four musical instruments played worldwide is a Yamaha. We also are the largest music educator. We have over 6 million student, student graduates from 40 countries from around the world, and we've been doing that for about 50 years. Our slogan in the music education area is creating music for tomorrow. The goal for that really is to help create the next generation of music makers, but also further enhance the Yamaha brand. So there's a lot of uh, A-level artists that also play and support the Yamaha brand as well. Elton John, Paul McCartney, Michael McDonald, Justin Timberlake, Alicia Keys, just to name a few. They all play Yamaha. We've also made a custom piano for Elton John called the Million Dollar Piano. It took about four years to make, and it cost about a million dollars to, to bring to market. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can just simply Google Yamaha and Million Dollar Piano and read all about it. So everything we do, every product we make revolves around music. We are truly powered by music. And we are probably the only company that could put on a concert with all the major components being from the same company, from brass to woodwinds to guitars to keyboards to drums and live sound, all using Yamaha equipment. I think that's pretty impressive. Okay, so now let's get into uh, the topic here. Uh, Yamaha doesn't sell direct, so we've worked through our dealers. And because of that, we realized the need to try and get closer to our customer and to be able to drive more traffic to our dealers. So at the same time, we also want to improve the, the uh, customer experience 
when someone contacted Yamaha, as well as our customer support. So the thought was we should have all of our customer contacts available in a centralized place. Every time a customer contacted support or responded to an ad campaign or registered a product, we wanted this to be available or visible to the marketing team as well as our support staff. Then to better take that data and improve our products, improve our support, and improve our demand for our products through our channel partners. The program that we were, uh, developed was called Customer Centric Yamaha, or CCY for short. I'm sure many of you have acronyms in your own uh, environment. So one challenge, though, with the plan was like many companies, we had many different product departments. And as a result, we also had a lot of customer information that was in different departments. The marketing team uh, and the information they used and shared with customers was also slightly different. So we, even with registered products, we had some challenges. One division didn't know that the same customer was being marketed to by another division. So, in fact, the same customer was receiving electronic and paper marketing communications from several different Yamaha divisions. We were, without realizing it, creating our own problem. It's no wonder people get tired of numerous emails from companies and requests to be removed from your, your marketing list. We were causing our own issue. So some of the key elements that we wanted to put together for that CCY program was really three particular areas. We wanted a particular repository for all the touch points from our marketing teams as well as our support teams, and Salesforce was going to be the central point for the data. We also wanted to take advantage of the multiple data points and use it to our advantage. We had a lot of data, but we just weren't using it effectively. Not enough insights to what the data was telling us and not enough action on the data itself. And finally, what we wanted to do is better understand every time a customer connected with Yamaha, what did they like? What did they click on on our website? And what FAQ did they view? All of these were the foundation of the project to improve the customer support area as well as our customer experience and our sales and marketing efforts. So this is a quick snapshot of where we were prior to the CCY project. We had support in all the customer contacts on one side and marketing all their customer efforts on the other side with Salesforce in the middle. So if you look at this from a graphical perspective, it really kind of helps illustrate the problem. We didn't have a, a good total view of the customer. We thought we did. Marketing thought we did. And so did support. However, we really didn't know what we were missing. We had some pieces on both sides that could really help. So marketing didn't have the visibility to any of the customer support data, any of the emails, comments, cases, concerns, complaints. And at the same time, the service department didn't have access to any of the other things from the marketing side. So we didn't know what products the customer had registered, what marketing campaigns they responded to, as well as what access to the other marketing survey data that customers may be uh, participated in. So moving forward, it was a, a large project. We had to get a bunch of departments together. We had to get everybody to agree to the, the uh, direction we wanted to go into. We knew we had to get everybody on board and get all of our ducks in a row, so to speak, to make this happen. So around the same time, we also had a bit of good luck in that Yamaha uh, won a uh, Salesforce service and support makeover sponsored by Deloitte. So, which was a great thing. So we had some outside help to help us out. The staff from Deloitte, they actually told us in about seven weeks they were going to transform our contact center to be more efficient and get us ready to support social customers using Salesforce. And our first reaction was like, great, but really, in seven weeks? Are you sure you can do that? Because we've seen contracts negotiations that, you know, take longer than that. So any of you have dealt with uh, legal departments and contracts, you know what I'm talking about. However, in a very short seven weeks, uh, the Deloitte team came in. They were great. They helped us diagnose our Salesforce CRM system. They helped prescribe some solutions and implement all those solutions in that seven-week time frame. So our marketing team was using social media, but support wasn't. So with the help of the Deloitte team, they got us ready to go into that endeavor. So, as I said, one of the main goals of the project was to set up a Yamaha support team with a social media and chatter through Salesforce. Uh, have the call center reps and basically anyone else that's using Salesforce internally be more social by using chatter and get our contact center teams up on board with that avenue of support. 
However, the, the other thought was, since we have the hood open and we're going to in, implement the social component, so why don't we take time to address some of these other customer service areas or customer service pains uh, that are causing us problems. The plan was really to identify a list of issues where any places where technology was getting in the way of us providing some a high level of customer satisfaction and imp help improve that customer experience along the way. Now, we were a traditional uh, call, inbound call center, so phone and email uh, is what we were prior to this transition. So adding on a component of social uh, with really limited amount of resources, uh, I was concerned. So that really gave me a couple other pots to watch in addition to the email and the phone areas. But it was exciting to think about Yamaha and from the support perspective, be able to reach out to customers in that new avenue. Uh, but again, at the same time, I was a little concerned about uh, adding more complexity and adding more context on a very uh, small, limited uh, support staff. So the Deloitte team, they really helped us formalize uh, that area. And I realize this slide's a little bit busy, so I'll take you through a couple of the key areas of it. Uh, it uses as a baseline for the development our support tagline, which is Yamaha Listens. And we built upon that slogan as we went through the process. We established our social media plan uh, using the hub and spoke design. So in the lower left-hand corner, uh, the center of that hub is the, the service and support uh, entry. So and around it is all the marketing sites. So what this did is allowed for the marketing sites to focus on product and marketing, and then any technical requests could be directed to the dedicated support site. We actually call our support Facebook and our support Twitter sites the Yamaha Hub. It's the official place for social service and support requests. So the, the social media, the objective, objectives were discussed and we agreed upon them internally, and there was initially uh, three. It was to detect issues, enhance customer service, and deflect any customer inquiries. Now, deflecting customer inquiries sounds a bit interesting, but one way that would really happen on the social side is that the responses are visible. It's not like email where it's a one-to-one, -one, an email uh, only serves one customer, whereas a social post is one-to-many. So with a professional response and a quality and a timely response, that response has a potential to reach out to multiple people, effectively becoming a, a virtual FAQ, if you will. So in addition to that, the, the, there was a phased-in approach. Uh, was developed, and it was really three phases. Phase one was listen and learn, which means that we would respond to any direct inbound inquiries to our hub or our Twitter page. And then phase two was proactive support, where we would kind of go out and search for uh, items out there, where someone may have mentioned Yamaha, but not directly uh, directed that post to Yamaha. I believe Brad talked about the wow factor, and this is one of the ways we can do that. And how cool is it to reach out to a customer that has not really commented directly to Yamaha, but maybe to one of their friends about either a good or a bad experience with Yamaha, and we can reach that, grab it, pull it in through Salesforce, and respond to that particular customer. So that really extends the wow factor, and we're pretty excited about that. And then phase three is uh, really collaborate and engage, and that's really working more with our marketing department and working more with our sales departments and pulling our other, other departments into the, the mix as well and allowing them to be uh, more social and enhance their reach as well. So one of the, the big things uh, that we implemented was the support console. You know, we had the ability. We just didn't know it. We had the ability. The Deloitte team really helped us understand the value of it and why we should have it in front of our agents. In total, we actually implemented over 40 changes into our service cloud implementation. All of these focused on improving the support the agents provide as well as making it easier for them to support the customer better. So, for example, this might be a bit hard to read as well, uh, but now with this, uh, the service cloud council, there's multiple tabs that the agent can have in front of them at any given time so they can flip back and forth. Uh, we rearranged the screen to make it a little more conducive to the way the agent worked. So now the information flows better when they're processing a, a customer request. And in the lower right there, you'll see um, new emails are now auto-matched to a new account, 
what was happening prior to that was that uh, any time a customer who sent us an email who hadn't sent one prior, it went into our system, and then the agent had to automatically set up the account. I'm sorry, manually had to set up the account. Now this happens automatically, so it takes a couple clicks away from the agent, which is very, very good. So just a little bit of a recap. This is where we were. Marketing uh, and their customer efforts on one side, and then support with all their customer contacts on the other side. And you can see there's the division there. We were all using Salesforce, but uh, we're using it slightly different. So this gives you a picture of where we ended up. So now, as a support team, we have visibility to things we didn't have visible before, product registration data, product survey data, marketing campaigns. You know, all these allow the support team to better understand and serve the customer better. We also built the system for future growth. So you see on the right-hand side there. So if there's new channels that we want to support or if there's new data points that we want to incorporate, that system now already supports it with Salesforce with Salesforce being the foundation for that. So we think we're positioned pretty well going forward. So part of this intervention from uh, Deloitte is the social aspect. So prior to that, as I mentioned, Yamaha really was a traditional inbound call center. We supported phone and email. Now we offer phone, email, and social as ways for customers to reach out to us. The thought being that it's really trying to make it more convenient for our customers to reach out to us and where they are. You know, we realize that customers aren't on our website every day, although we'd like them to be, but there's many people that's on Facebook every day, many people that's on Twitter every day. So we want to have that presence there and be able to uh, be there if someone needs us. So now also in a contact center environment, it's always tempting to try and you know, move people away from the phone to more or less expensive channels such as uh, email or you know, FAQs. Uh, however, there's always going to be a, a balance that you're going to need to do um, because there's always going to be customers who call, no computer, no Internet access, or for whatever the reason, we we'll always have some phone customers. And we realize that. That's no problem. We're always going to be here if they need, excuse me, if they need us. However, we want to make sure that we reach out to those customers that also may not be aware of the support options that we have in the other channels. We want to raise the awareness that someone who may call as a first reaction but might email if they knew it existed or might uh, send us a post on Facebook if they knew that existed. So we're trying to raise that awareness internally with all of the uh, customers that may be on some of their channels just to let them know what the other channels are and how efficient they can be with some of those other channels. So, and also you can make the, the discussion point of social could be more personal than phone and potentially less costly than, say, self-service. And what I mean by that is the post on a, a social channel is a one-to-many. So what that gives you the opportunity to do is lower, potentially lower your costs by customers may be seeing those posts with a question and an answer that may be something similar or exactly their question so then they don't have to send it. Uh, but also, from a more personal standpoint, we're only just a few clicks away of really knowing a lot more about that customer on the social side, you know, who their friends are, what they like, what type of music they like, what type of food they like. All that is available if the customer makes it available. So there's quite a bit of information that's out there that can be utilized effectively to help support the customer and help effectively market to that customer. Okay, so that that being said, so what were the results of what we went through and what did we find? So, of course, the, the first one is we had some happier agents. You know, they had a little bit less clicks to do. They, they organized their workflow. We paid attention to them. So it's amazing that what you'll find from the agents is by simply paying attention to them, asking what they, they can uh, – or what they need to help them do a better job. And the sales force and Deloitte folks helped us do that. Um, and I mentioned early on that I was a little concerned about the uh, overall volume. But typically support staffs are of the small and they're not of the large. And we're typically a cost center, not a, a profit center. And so I'm happy to report that the emails are trending down. Even with the number of social cases trending up. So that's a very good result that we've seen. And lastly, there it gives a customer a uh, or gives us a, a holistic point of view from the customer. 
So we get an idea of how they interacted with Yamaha. What did they do? What products have they registered? What marketing campaigns have they uh, responded to? Uh, how many cases have they had? Are they having difficulties? You know, what's going on with that customer? So it really helps us do a better job on marketing to that customer and overall supporting that customer. So what did we learn? So and overall, the technology was there, and technology is easy. It's just getting people to use it is what's a little bit harder. So the changing the behavior of a customer and even our own internal staff, you know, just takes some time. Both our customers and our support team are very familiar with uh, contacting us or providing support via the phone or via email. But to get both of those groups to try a different uh, source, such as social, it'll just take some time. It's new. It's different. Uh, but what we're seeing is people are liking it, and our, our um, results show it is trending up. You also don't know what you don't know. You know, this is the case with us. Yeah, we had a Salesforce solution that was in place for about five years. And for lack of a solution, it was working. It was working fine. Uh, but we didn't know a lot of things. You know, at the same time, Salesforce is constantly updating their system. They're constantly adding new features. They're constantly adding new things that can help uh, call centers. And we weren't taking advantage of that. You know, don't let that happen to you and your support teams. The Deloitte folks opened our eyes to some of these things that we didn't know was there that really could help us. So we could have implemented some of these changes a lot earlier if we would have known that, uh, and we won't let that happen again thanks to the, this whole process and the Deloitte team that helped us out. And finally, you know, happy agents lead to happy customers. You know, that's a great say, uh, statement, and it seems pretty obvious. The uh, an agent, if they're happy with what they do and they like their job, and it makes it you make it easy for them. You know, that's always a good thing. And you know, less clicks, less, faster problem identification. And you know, we wanted to make sure we spent a lot of time on making it easier for the agent because we wanted them to spend more time on troubleshooting with the customer versus trying to satisfy some system requirements, and I think we've done that. It, it also reduces, you know, turnover with the agent. If the agent's happy, he's going to be there longer, and it also has a positive effect on customer satisfaction, so all good things. And finally, you know, happy customers lead to interactions and just talking about the company. Uh, that's a good thing. So if, they, if they're happy with their out-of-box experience or they're happy with their support uh, involvement or enjoy the marketing interactions or contests or whatever we engage them with, uh, they're just talking about you. They're talking about you and your company, and that's a good thing. So the more word of mouth advertising you can have out there, that's a good thing. And that pretty much wraps it up for me. So now what I'd like to do is turn it over to uh, Rob Rose from Deloitte. Rob? I am there. Thank you so much, Rick. That was that was awesome. Um, and I want to say that the Deloitte gang very much enjoyed working with the Yamaha team. Um, that was a fantastic project. And for those of you, of you who don't know, Rick is, in fact, a movie star now. There is a, a movie about that project out there, which you can probably find on Salesforce's website, or I'm not, I'm not sure, but uh, that's kind of a fun movie. Um, so first, for uh, uh, to wake you up in case you were uh, threatening to fall asleep, um, some bright colors. This is an amazing slide from GoGlobe. And uh, the stats, I'm not going to read through the stats, but, you know, 100,000 tweets a second, um, 600 new movies on YouTube or per second. Uh, my teenage daughters couldn't even keep up with this. And it, it just shows you that it's that wow factor. And I guess Tony's chart showing that it's exploding. Um, uh, it's, it is exploding. Um, so people have changed, you know, they, what they, how they work, what they do, and the, their expectations are, I guess, the big deal. And I think there's an employee view their expectations of their company and the ability to collaborate and of their company to be social. There's a consumer or customer view, uh, expecting to get so service um, through the different channels as well as um, have support uh, articles and, and videos pushed to them. So there's a lot of elements there. And I think a B2B view as well um, for resellers and channel partners expect the company for whom they are reselling to be social, to be collaborative, to have collaboration tools. Uh, so, so I think there's a lot of pieces of the social, and I think all the perspectives and views are in play, and it's exploding, as, as has been pointed out. And then the world where, in, in which we deliver social service is changing, um, obviously social, uh, but mobility. I mean, traditionally, things have been mobile. Uh, 
field service has been pretty mobile. But now everybody's mobile. Everybody wants service and answers on their mobile phone as they walk around wherever they are. Um, the cloud, obviously, Salesforce is on the cloud. But if, look, just, if you just take App Exchange, I think there's nearly 2,000 companies on the App Exchange now. That's 2,000 companies in the cloud that didn't exist 10 years ago. Um, and probably most of those didn't exist three years ago. So that, 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 that kind of velocity of change is, is really just amazing. And then the analytics, I think, is a big deal and something we work on a lot at Deloitte because at the end of the day, if you can't measure some of this, you don't know how you're impacting the metrics. You don't know how you're moving the needle and the business value of moving the needle uh, is what really ultimately you're trying to drive business value and tracking that is, is critical. Um, this is kind of a fun slide. If, if you can read it, I'm not sure, but um, my question is kind of what isn't social service? So obviously social support is, is part of that and proactive social support. But collaboration, if we've got some interesting case studies where it was really just ultimately collaboration and sharing knowledge across within a company that, that accelerates the, the resolution and the speed of resolving a case. Social intelligence and, and pulling that in and, and having access to um, you know, previous cases and, and knowledge bases and then exposing those um, to mobile users who are looking for support answers and, and, and status on their cases. Um, and then you don't get very far without some of the foundational capabilities. So some governance, uh, some policy, um, working with a company that puts out a lot of uh, support-related articles and videos. And every one of those goes out with the Twitter handle of the person who wrote it. So I'm not dealing, I'm not trying to get an answer resolved with, um, uh, you know, a, a pre-sales type of person. I don't actually have to call, call call the call center, I can have a Twitter exchange with the person who wrote the article around the product issue I'm having. And I think that's a really dynamic way. But it, as you start to have more people do that, you have to have some sort of policy and education around how you do those exchanges. Because as you have hundreds, maybe thousands of people uh, tweeting customers, um, it's just good to have some knowledge of what's happening. Um, Social marketing, I mean, 40 is the new 30. I'm pushing 50. I hope, I'm hoping that's the new 40. Uh, but, I, you know, support is the new marketing. I think there's a lot of things now that uh, happen in terms of marketing. And I stopped putting check marks at sales because at that point it would have been a little bit ridiculous. But I, I, I could make an argument that, you know, service is the new sales. In fact, that's what we've been saying for 10 years now. Um, so I'm not going to read this. Don't, don't panic. But there's a lot of pieces, and we tend to focus on uh, monitoring, listening, you know, call handling, case resolution, and maybe closed loop back to uh, products and obviously back to customers. But again, there's, there's a lot of people in process uh, to think about uh, before you start using the technology. And uh, you can download, download the slide and get some ideas. Um, but we, we've put a lot of thought into that because ultimately, um, it, it's that concept of like, oh, I've got a tweet, now what, right? So uh, if you've got these pieces in place, and, and again, it's, it's not rocket science. There's a lot of kind of interesting things that you're already doing probably, but just thinking about them in terms of social service. Um, so next, and, and I'm going to go fast to allow some time for questions. This, I, I'd like to go through each and every box uh, on this slide. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Deloitte has developed what we call the shareholder value map, and that's you're looking at a snapshot of it. And each box represents a driver that ultimately leads to shareholder value. And a lot of those are related to social service. And so what we, what we challenge people to do as they think about getting started is like, what metrics matter to you? How are you going to drive business value, right? And where are those on the, on the shareholder value? And really, Ultimately, these things do have great benefits, but they also take cost. And when there's cost, there's approvals and budgets and things. And uh, on a business case, often it, it helps if you can really articulate where you're driving value uh, and, and where that plays on the value map and then how that relates to um, social service, right? So in, in the next slide, just some thoughts about if you're trying to get a budget <laughs> to get started. Um, uh, how to think about that. And so building out a social value map, perhaps. Understanding your prioritized capabilities and opportunities, like here's where I am with social and social service. Here's where I'd like to be. And understanding those gaps, right? 
and then putting it in place a, a basic plan of action. And so uh, these, uh, again, you can download if you have questions, but this is some things we've been working with, a little bit with Yamaha and other customers, to really help think about, geez, where am I trying to go with this? There's so many pieces to it. How do I get started and what matters? And what besides taking a Facebook case and a, and a Twitter to case, what, what else do I need to have in place to, to really succeed here? And then just a very fancy view of a – I just picked this one because it was the most dramatic um, – kind of mapping out the journey and, you know, what's the case for change, what's the target state, what's the path forward, and what are the benefits I'm going to get out of it. You know, kind of mapping that out. And, again, I picked one that's kind of looks excessively dramatic, but they can be simple, they can be dramatic, but at the end of the day, it's really – once you understand that, you can kind of rally, gain buy-in, people understand it, um, and, and push it forward. Because ultimately, it's, it's a journey and it's a program. So social service is not like – Suddenly taking a couple of Twitter, tweet, you know, tweets, it's, it's really a whole lot of things. It's field service. It's parts. It's, it, it could be many, many different channels. It's, it's the, the listening engine, using Radiant 6 and uh, adapting how I function based on what I hear people say about me. Um, many, many pieces. So with that exciting view of the journey and only a few minutes left for Q&A, I will stop and um, open up. Uh, push back to the moderator and open up for Q&A. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Rob. And, wow, so much truly great, valuable information on social service all across the board. Um, but, yes, it's time to get to Q&A, and we are very close to the top of the hour, but I would like to touch on a couple of questions. Um, and I will remind everybody that you can continue to ask questions during the Q&A and just type them into the text box and submit and we will get to them. So first, let's see. We have a question here um, that came in, and it was directed to Brad, but I think um, I think everybody might have the opportunity to weigh in on this. Um, but Brad, so how will social service impact the nature of the contact center in the coming months? Uh, yeah, great question. And, you know, Rob end, ended on such a great note, it, the, and it really sums up, I think, the whole hour. This is a journey, and a, a, the contact center is on a, a journey. It's becoming a tier two. You, know, you don't call with basic questions anymore. They've gone through self-service. They've gone through social channels. So our agents are problem solvers. They're not they're not answer givers anymore, and and uh, it, it's as important as ever. This doesn't displace the contact center. It uh, it elevates it to a new and important role. Well, thank you, Brad. Um, we have another question that came in, and it is, how does social media and support apply to nonprofit trade organizations? Now, does anybody want to jump in and maybe, um, maybe Tony, do you have an answer for this? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not sure there, there's, there's, you know, you know, social media is pervasive, right? And it it doesn't uh, choose choose camps. And I think uh, it's just as important to uh, to be uh, you know have a to you know as Rob showed have a have a process around how to understand um, you know how to how to engage uh, social media as part of service, uh, irrespective of uh, you know what realms we're working in. So I think it's it's just as important uh, across the board. I'll, I'll just throw something in real quick to the National Cancer Institute. It's, it's government, not nonprofit per se, but a uh, similar sort of mission. It's one of the most innovative organizations out there in terms of what they're doing on Facebook and engaging through social and very, uh, a very sensitive topic. They're doing a great job with it. So I agree totally with what Tony's saying. It's pervasive. Thank you, Brian. Now, does anybody have any else, anything else that they want to just add in? because we're just about at the top of the hour, so we're going to need to move on. Just reminding folks that they can download the slides, because I know there's a lot of, you know, meat on some of those slides, and uh, it might be, if, if, if our people are interested, they can grab them. Yes, absolutely. All these slides are downloadable. And with that, um, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for the Q&A, but I do appreciate everybody's attendance today. Um, and if you'd like, you can keep in touch with Brad, Tony, Rick, and Rob. 
Um, you can also visit ICMI.com to find out about related training or upcoming webinars from ICMI. And we do hope that you will join us again soon. So shortly after today's live event, you'll be able to access this presentation on demand. This webcast is copyright 2012 by ICMI. The presentation materials are owned by or copyright, if that is the case, by ICMI, which is solely responsible for its content, and the individual speakers are solely responsible for their content and their opinions. So on behalf of our guests and our sponsors, Salesforce and Deloitte, thank you for joining us today.